Hi, my name is Ben Joseph. I'm a retired Vermont Superior Court judge. This is a program in which I interview people about uh, issues and concerns about the Vermont's legal system. Um, today, I'm very happy to say I've got Jean Murray uh, as a guest, and I'll be interviewing her about uh, what legal aid is doing for people who haven't been able to pay their rent during this uh, COVID mess. Uh, this has been going on for, uh, for quite a while. So, Jean, hello. 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 And uh, how long have you worked for Legal Aid? I've worked for Vermont Legal Aid since uh, 1998. Wow. I've worked on housing cases. I came here from Massachusetts um, and I've worked on those. Well, I actually started in law school, but uh, since wow. 1990. Where'd you go to law school? I went to Northeastern University School of Law in Boston. Boy, Boston has got its, uh, a fistful of, of law schools. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a quite a few law schools. Yeah, did, did, you, did you did you like going to school in Northeastern? Was it good? Um, yes, I liked it very much. One of the reasons that I liked it was because while you're in law school, you they put on a quarter system, so you'd be a quarter in school and then a quarter out on co-op. I did all my co-ops um, for legal services kind of places. So I started working with clients right away, helping them on, on these kind of issues. I, I didn't realize that they did. That's a very good idea. That's yeah. a very good idea. Well, um, and so you've, if you've worked over 20 years in, in legal aid in Vermont. And you, is it mostly in housing? Um, housing has always been a part of my caseload. I've also done a whole uh, a number of other kinds of practices, including um, defensive debt collection. So, wow. Well, how many um, eviction cases do you handle typically in a year in your job? Um, well, I, I could say that all eviction cases and housing related cases is one of the biggest kind of cases that the whole of Vermont Legal Aid handles. Oh. So we're divided into different units and, and uh, I work in the Poverty Law Project, um, but also the Elder Law Project and um, the VOCA. We have all sorts of different projects that help people um, retain their housing. Um, and so Legal Aid, I would say it's about, in terms of caseload, it's about a, at least a quarter of our our work uh, cross program. So is that hundreds of cases every year? Hundreds of cases, like 600 cases a year. Wow. And what is an eviction case? So when a landlord and a tenant make an agreement to rent a place, um, the tenant has possession. Mm -hmm. And in Vermont, the law requires that in order for a landlord to get possession back, they need to go to court and get a court order. But before they go to court and get a court order, they have to send a termination of tenancy notice. And that notice has to follow certain requirements in the law. So some people get a notice of termination and they call that an eviction. Um, and then once the termination date is ended and the landlord goes to court to get a court order, um, that court case is called an eviction. And is there a moratorium on eviction actions now in Vermont? Yes, yeah, since last year, um, there was, there's been a moratorium on evictions in Vermont. And it, the first month of it um, was essentially because the court closed down and wasn't holding any hearings at all. Um, and then- I've done, I've done a program about that, more than one actually. The lack of judicial resources has been a, a problem across the board. Well, last year with the shutdown, when the court shut down, it, it took them, they just said, nobody comes to the courthouse, we're not holding hearings, we're gonna have to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And um, in the meantime, last year, the legislature passed a law that said all evictions are stayed, meaning stopped. They could be filed, but the court couldn't act on them. Um, and that, law that was passed by the legislature says right in it, how long is this moratorium going to last? The moratorium is going to last essentially 30 days longer than the governor's declared 
state of emergency. So every month uh, since last year, the governor has extended the state of emergency, which gives the governor powers to do a, a number of things. And so um, to take care of the health of Vermonters. So as long as the state of emergency keeps going, um, the moratorium will keep going and be 30 days longer than that. So that means that the landlord isn't collecting the rents. So this is a problem for landlords too, isn't it? Well, I mean, there's nothing about the moratorium that says you don't have to pay your rent. The, the moratorium simply says uh, that the court can't issue an order for you to get out. But everybody always had an obligation to pay their rent. And a lot of people did pay their rent. Last year, there was a, a rent assistance program to help people whose um, income changed so that they could pay their rent. So that's the tenant side. Tenants were always obligated to pay rent and there was a, a rent assistance program to help them pay. From the landlord's side, even though with COVID funding, uh, a lot of different kinds of businesses got uh, special funding, there were, was no special funding available for landlords. All landlords could do would be to get the tenants to pay the rent and help them get rent assistance. And they did. Um, the rent assistance program was successful as it was because landlords help their tenants uh, get rent assistance. So and the landlords have been helping the tenants uh, file an application to get rent assistance? There, all the rent assistance last year, and we haven't talked about this year's program yet, but the rent assistance okay. last year and this year, the rent in the program will be paid directly to landlords who give in their information um, to enable them to get paid. And what, I've seen a lot of stuff in the papers about the, the federal judges and court actions and all of, the, all of these eviction cases here are brought in state courts. Is that correct? Right, eviction is a state matter. Landlord tenant law will vary from state to state. And so in Vermont, I mean, other states, you may not need a court order to do an eviction, but in Vermont, you definitely need a court order to enforce an eviction. Um, things that in the newspaper about federal courts um, acting on the Center for Disease Control's uh, moratorium, mm -hmm. um, all that is very interesting. It doesn't apply to Vermont because <laughs> Vermont has a, a moratorium of its own. Mm -hmm. So the CDC moratorium doesn't apply here. Okay, all right. I want, I'm, I'm hoping that this show will give, bring information to people who would need to file for rental assistance. And if they need to do that, to, would you suggest that they should start by talking to the landlord? Well, certainly it's going to work better if landlords and tenants um, look into the program and understand it together. So right now, the application for the program is online. Uh -huh. There's a place for tenants to apply and there's a place for landlords to apply. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like if landlords apply and put their information in, and send in their form so that they can receive a direct deposit payment. Mm -hmm. And when the tenant applies, the landlord's information will already be in the system and mm -hmm. that will help the tenant's application go through faster. Um, but obviously it would be important to talk with each other ahead of time mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. the landlord saying, well, I I'm going to apply for this and I'm gonna put in that, um, this is the amount of rent uh, for this apartment and I'm gonna put in your name so that you'll be able to match up my information with your information. I, I've asked that uh, the people at Community TV flash the legal aid information number uh, as part of this taped recording. 1-800-889-2046. Um, so someone could call legal aid and get information if they wanted to know how they should proceed. Is that, is, did I get that right? Um, well, any, anybody can call legal aid 1-800-889-2047 with any kind of legal question that they might have. If people want basic information about this program, we have it on our legal aid website, which is vtlawhelp.org. Mm -hmm. And also there's information about this program 
on Vermont State Housing Authority's website, which is vsha.org. So I wouldn't in the first instance say, I'd like information about the program, so I'm gonna call up legal aid. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you have tried to access the program and you've run into difficulty and you're having a problem with it, um, or you've gotten a notice or a letter back from the VRAP program that you don't understand, those are the kinds of folks that we want to have called legal aid right now. Okay. All right. I'm always cautious about telling people they should get online and check something out because there's some people who don't have the computer, you know, they don't have access. So I'm glad that the, we could also start with a phone number. Well, I could, I could say a little bit about who's eligible for the program, if that would help. Go ahead. Yeah. So this is a program that is aimed entirely at renters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sad to say that it's not aimed at homeowners. There is going to be another program to help homeowners, but it's not uh, up yet. Um, and that won't be through Vermont State Housing Authority. So this is a renters program. So the first qualification is that you're obligated to pay rent in the state of Vermont. And what kind of place that could be any kind of place. It can be a mobile home lot. It can be an apartment. You could be renting a house. You could be renting a room in a motel on a permanent basis. Um, you could be uh, renting, um, paying rent at a recovery residence. You could be paying rent at a level three care home. And the part of that cost that is rent, you could apply for help with that. So you're just obligated to pay rent at a residential dwelling in Vermont is the first qualification. The second qualification is that you have had a hardship, financial hardship due to COVID, which almost everybody has. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have either been receiving unemployment or they have lost income or their expenses are increased or they're paying more than 30% of their income for rent. So that's another qualification. The third qualification is that you are at risk of um, housing instability, which means you could have gotten a termination notice or an eviction paper. Um, you could be behind on your utilities, which would put you at housing instability. You could have bad conditions in your home that make the home less than healthy or safe, or that you're paying more than 30% of your income for rent. Um, so housing instability is not difficult to establish. Um, and then the uh, last criteria is that your income is below 80% of area median income. And below 80% of area median income is uh, pretty easy to get to. So for instance, 30% of area median income for a single person household is the same thing as 100% of federal poverty level for people who keep track of that kind of thing for their benefits. Um, but people live together with other people and you count the whole household's income and um, the income, which is 80% of median, there's a chart. You'd be surprised at actually how much income that is. So. Um, it's very hard to describe because it could be $45,000 a year. It could be $60,000 a year, depending on which county you live in and how many people are in your household. So those are the uh, eligibility qualifications. Mm -hmm. What we expect is that a lot of people are going to be eligible. We know that um, there's quite a few people in the renting population, about half of them, that pay more than 30% of their income for rent. So I think people should uh, look into it and see if they meet the income eligibility criteria. Because mm -hmm. I think quite a few people who want the program will find that they do meet the eligibility criteria. Wow. Well, uh, I've, I've, you know, every day it seems I pick up a paper and there's more information <laughs> about what's going on with the uh, legislative efforts to try to help people who've been hurt by the uh, by the by the plague by the COVID-19 problems um, how much money is going to be available this year for the uh, rental assistance program do you know well this is interesting so 
I'm going to do a little a little bit of history because people might have heard these numbers. Mm -hmm. A year ago, the funding from the federal government was called the CARES Act, mm -hmm. and Vermont got a small state minimum, which turned out to be a significant amount of money, and decided on its own, without being told to by the federal government, to use some of that for rent assistance. And so we used 25 million of that for rent assistance last year. Was it all paid out? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Good. And, the, and there were more people who wanted it. We could have paid out more than 25 million. Um, as, and we didn't do a whole lot of, um, I'm surprised to have found out that a number of people didn't even know about the program last year. That's one of the reasons we're doing this show. <laughs> right. So this year, at the end of the year, the federal government, um, as part of its budget bill, sent Vermont $200 million specifically to help renters. Wow. And then in March, um, under the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, another $152 million was sent to Vermont specifically for renters. So there are, you know, there are ways that the law says some of this is going to be used for administration and some of this is going to be used for services, um, but that's quite a bit of money. So we're talking now about more than $350 million. I mean, yes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What, uh, have there been problems getting this program started? Has is, is, is there been administrative problems in people making applications? Um, so the, there, Vermont needed to wait for rules from the Treasury Department, from the US Treasury Department about how to use this money. And so it wasn't able to start planning the program and hiring a computer company to make the program uh, effective, wasn't able to start doing that until March. And so then we've asked this uh, computer company to put up an online application and all the aspects of this program so that they can process things. We asked them to do that on very little notice. And so they did make an application available at the beginning of April, but there were a lot of glitches and, and things that weren't exactly right about the application. So people are able to apply, but right now um, the computer company is still working through how to make that efficient and effective. And we expect there to be improvements and changes so that it will all make sense um, but right now, it, the, the application processing has not been very speedy. I, I gather that's an understatement uh, <clears throat> in any event. But, you're, um, but the point is, help will be available. And in the meantime, uh, can, uh, is there a moratorium against eviction actions? Yeah, the moratorium is uh, currently in effect. And... We expect the state of emergency to continue to be in effect, I guess, um, at past June 15th. Uh, it is up to the governor as to how long he's gonna leave the state of emergency in effect. And then the moratorium will be in effect for 30 days longer than that. So we're looking at around August 1st, if the governor uh, the governor's been saying he's going to end the state of emergency. So if he does that, um, the moratorium will be over around August 1st. Uh, the moratorium would end around August 1st, end of July? The end of July, yes. Okay. So that would give people time to, uh, you know, to get, get an application together, to get legal yeah. assistance. Yeah. And there are groups, um, including Legal Aid and the Landlords Association and other um, people who are meeting with the judiciary to figure out exactly, well, there's not going to be anything exact about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like everything else in the pandemic, uh, we're all going to have to uh, use patience and understanding. And uh, I know the judiciary is going to do the best job it can to um, 
because that's a very unusual circumstance is stopping court cases for a year and then starting them up again. So hopefully there will be a understandable plan um, for when that begins to happen again and people are making that plan now. Well, you know, the judiciary is really up against it in terms of trying to get caught up on the backlogs. You know, there hasn't been a jury trial in a year. I mean, it's, it's really gonna be very difficult to get caught up. How many jury trials are there in a year, Judge? You know, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, there, there haven't been major criminal cases. I've been delayed for more than a year. You got people waiting in jail for a trial. There are all kinds of things that have been very difficult. Yeah. I have, I've, had some, I've, I've had some personal knowledge of cases in which uh, people have been hurt by the delays, uh, not because anybody in the judiciary wants to you know, hurt citizens, but the, the delays access to courts is very important. Well, yeah. One of the things that I, I've learned in the pandemic is um, that we knew this before, that 75% of all evictions that get filed are filed because of non-payment of rent. Um, the concept before the pandemic, and I think some people think it's the concept now, is that the only way a, a landlord has to protect himself and their and his finances is to do an eviction. And I think if there were money to pay the landlord, we could avoid a lot of eviction. Eviction is destabilizing for the households that go through eviction. Eviction is expensive for the state of Vermont. But at the same time, landlords need to get paid. So you, one of the delays that has perhaps, perhaps hurt people about uh, the court delays is that landlords, some landlords haven't gotten paid and they haven't, um, they didn't have a remedy to figure out how to get paid. All of that was actually a very good thing in terms of Vermont's health. Keeping people stable in housing was a good thing for their health, but landlords need to get paid. So they need to pay taxes. I mean, and so many, so many landlords only own a few properties. It must be very difficult for them not to get paid. So the, the thing that is going to help Vermonters, help Vermont landlords is this rent assistance program. Right. And uh, so we have to have faith that it is going to work. The money is there. We need to have patience and faith that it's uh, going to be a remedy. And one of the things we found out last year with the rent assistance program last year is the average grant was about $2,500. But when we needed to settle a court case, it cost about $7,500. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's much more expensive to have to go to court and usually that expense falls on the landlord um, because they can, they can try to collect their judgments against tenants, but that just actually costs them more money. So the best thing to do would be to get rent assistance, get uh, the rent paid up and, and not go to court. Well, that's, that's in everybody's interest, it seems to me. Yeah. I mean, if, if someone makes an application and they, it's approved and the money is paid to the land, landlord, then there's no court action. Is that right? That would be the result to be hoped for, yes. Which doesn't, um, I'm setting aside for the moment and not talking about when tenants have some problems with their uh, apartments or with their landlords where repairs are needed and and things like that aren't getting done. I mean, all of those uh, remedies in the law uh, mm -hmm. still exist. Um, that landlords are supposed to provide a safe and habitable dwelling. Mm -hmm. And the best way for tenants to get landlords to make necessary repairs is to uh, let them know what is needed in writing. And I know sometimes tenants are reluctant to do that because they think their landlord will get mad, um, but it is really the best way to get repairs is to let the landlord know in writing uh, what needs to be done. Um, and then have a conversation with them about it and arrange with them uh, how when and how they can get in to get things fixed and, and what the level of the repair is gonna be. It, 
there are plenty of landlords and tenants who talk with each other. And it is where the landlords and tenants don't talk with each other that there ends up being problems. Does legal aid help with that? Is, is there times when legal aid will help the conversation between a, a legal aid client and a landlord? Well, I just found out today that by the middle of June, we expect that there is going to be a mediation program up. Oh. So as long as somebody, as long as the tenant household is below 80% of area median income, they will be able to apply for mediation. Um, the tenant will have a lawyer with them and they will be able to have really skilled mediators. We did this a little bit last year and it, it worked out really well because mediators know how to help people uh, focus on how to solve the problems and get problems solved to keep it from anybody from going to court. So I'm really glad to hear that we're gonna have that this year. I don't know how long that's gonna be for. I think mediation works fine for tenants as long as they have lawyers with them and legal aid will be uh, with the tenants that qualify for this program. Well, that's, that's really great news. That, that, that should encourage people to contact legal aid and see if they can get help. Wow. Well, that's not quite up yet, but- Well, yeah. well you know, but it, I, I assume people could call now and get information when it will be up and what they'd have to do to get this help. Is that right? Sure. Oh, all right. Well, good. Well, uh, I'm limited to 30 minutes uh, in this show, and I'm almost there. <laughs> I didn't used to have a limit, so I had a, I was interviewing a judge who took more than an hour. <laughs> and I think we probably had lost most of the audience by the time we got to 60 minutes. Gene, I want to thank you so much for being here today, and thank you for what you're doing. I really think this is a very important thing uh, that you're doing, and I think the judiciary is helping. and. Uh, it's, it's, it's to be saluted. So yeah. thank you again. If you ever get the urge to come back on the Judge Ben show, just give me a call, okay? Great, okay. thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So long now, thanks for watching. And um, I hope we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.